the Apostle Paul's exhortation um, regarding spiritual gifts, right? And uh, uh, a couple of um, things that he says. One is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 31, where Paul writes and he says, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Right? Earnestly desire. Just want us to keep that in mind. Earnestly desire. And uh, another one is uh, when we go to the 14th chapter, verse 1, it says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. Okay. So um, uh, we see that uh, a couple of things, a couple of the, in, in these couple of verses, um, we see um, Paul instructing the Corinthian church and saying, you know, earnestly desire earnestly desire I desire spiritual gifts one more verse the uh, this is again chapter 14 and uh, verse 39 the last good one verse right verse 39 therefore brethren desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues so so we see here the word desire being re repeated earnestly desire desire and uh, again desire earnestly so as we pray this morning, um, uh, you know, we, we see this reminder from Scripture to desire, to earnestly desire. And the word is a very strong word there. So let's, you know, as we pray, let's, um, let's just remind ourselves. And, uh, you know, if we have been passive when it, uh, uh, you know, about these gifts, um, we can... You know, we can just quickly make that adjustment and say, okay, God, I, I want to earnestly desire, right? earnestly desire, and make that adjustment and say, okay, what are these gifts that we see listed here? Uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healings, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and so on. So, um, so we say, Lord, I earnestly desire. You know, I come before you and I desire. Um, and, and that word is um, zillo, which means you know, if it, it's used in a, it, it means it's a, it's a strong desire, almost to covet, right? Um, and used negatively, it could mean you know, uh, it could use it for lust. It's, a, it's such a strong desire. So, um, and and, it, and it's biblical to have that kind of a strong desire for the things of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, because we see that it is a manifestation of the Spirit, right? It's the, it's a, it's the manifestation of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. So let's, uh, let's pray. I just want you to pray in your own heart and check where you are right now and see that today, right now, as I look into my life, is there that burning desire, that expectation for the gifts of the Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to, to manifest these gifts in my life? You know, is there a burning desire? Uh, whatever the gifts could be, you know, whatever the, the list that we saw. So introspect and check and see, is there that burning desire? If not, we can come to that place of making that alignment and saying, Lord, I I want to earnestly desire. I want to earnestly seek the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit in my life. <clears throat> because this is the will of God. This is the perfect will of God that every believer should desire earnestly for the gifts of the Spirit to work in their lives, right? So, so let's pray. Yes, Father God, this morning as we come before you, Lord, as we look into our own lives and, and we, Lord, we just want to want this uh, word to be so true in our lives, God, that we would every morning, <clears throat> every day, every waking moment, God, that we would <clears throat> that we would earnestly desire the best gifts. 
that we would desire spiritual gifts and we would desire earnestly to prophesy. Lord, let this be part of our lives, Lord. May we never forget this. May we never be passive, Lord, uh, about Lord, what you've asked us to do, God. And um, specifically, we're looking at this this morning and saying, God, whatever is causing that appetite to not be there, whatever has caused that desire to go down, Lord, let that be removed. Let that be addressed. Whether it's willful sin, whether it's compromise, um, whether it's rebellion, whether it's fear, whether it's ignorance, oh God, I pray, Lord, Lord, I pray that you would shine your light, that the light of your word, God, shine deep inside our hearts, Lord, and address those things, Master. <clears throat> Come, Holy Spirit, have your way. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way. You know, if, if there has been kind of a you know, passiveness about the things of God, uh, let that change right now in the name of Jesus. Let that change right now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire grow stronger and stronger. Let the fire burn stronger and stronger. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. You said, follow me. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Lord, even as we follow you, Lord, we thank you that you are making us. You are making us, molding us, shaping us, Lord, into who you have called us to be, Lord. Father God, we thank you. Lord, even today, this day, right now, we pray that you would, you would make us, that you would make us into who you want us to be, Lord. Make us, Lord. Mold us, shape us, Lord. Hallelujah. Let our Lord enable us to seek you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. Enable us to desire, Lord, the manifestation of the Spirit with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, with everything within us, God. Because from you, it is you through you, Lord. And it is of you, Lord. So there's nothing, Lord, <clears throat> nothing hidden, God, about it, God. You have made it very clear. And so we desire. We lay hold of that for which you've laid hold of us, Lord. We desire. Come with expectation. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way in us. Have your way within us, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Okay, so so that should be our you know our, should be our perspective, our outlook really, um, not to be intimidated by by you know the need um, or you know the greatness of the need or the challenges before us, um, you know the maybe the not to be intimidated even by the problems that are before us, the problems of people, right, uh, but to but to turn to God and say, okay, God, this is what you want me to do. Right? Uh, you want me to earnestly desire. And, uh, and when we're in that place of earnestly desiring, that's a place of faith because we are responding to what God has spoken. So that's a place of faith. And as we do that, um, it is for the edification of the church. So it is for the building up of the church that, that, uh, these gifts are released. So um, in doing so, the needs of people are met. Right? So we see various needs being met by the gifts of the Spirit. Even as we look at these gifts, we see that they address certain needs. They, uh, because it's God addressing the needs of people it, it's, and, and through people, right? through us as, as instruments of righteousness. So, um, so you know, it's, it's good. So not to be intimidated, not to be overwhelmed by the needs that we see, not to be overwhelmed by suffering, not to be over overwhelmed by uh, what we see around uh, the need of the church, but to really turn to God and say, okay, God, this is what you want me to do. Right? And, and the reason you want me to do this is because you want to show yourself strong um, uh, on our behalf right? in the lives of people in my life. Um, so 
So that is what that is why you set this in place. So that is why I seek you with all my heart, so that you can manifest um, your glory, your strength. You can show yourself strong, and uh, and that's what ministry is about, right? Praise God. Okay, so um, last class, I think we we kind of stopped with gifts of healing. We we looked at what gifts of healing is. Um, we saw that it is not a natural. Uh, tendency of the body to heal, you know, the God has actually placed that. Um, uh, it is our body can heal naturally. And then we also have medical intervention because of which the body uh, heals, our body is restored, and, and it's all good. But when we, when we specifically look at gifts of healing, it's not referring to any of that. It is referring to a supernatural act of God to heal a person supernatural work of God which brings about healing uh, in in the lives of people and the feeling and the, and the healing sorry I'm sorry the healing could be physical and sometimes the healing is also in the mind with regard to emotions and but the Lord brings about healing right? and there are uh, you know various sources of sickness right uh, the one primary source is because of because of the fallen nature right uh, because of which uh, sin entered and and uh, you know, because of which there is uh, corruption, um, the the whole entire creation is in the bondage of corruption, and we see those things happening uh, in in the bodies and minds of uh, in minds of people, you know, God's creations, and uh, and and God wants to uh, heal us, uh, whatever be the source, and it could be uh, fallen nature, it could be you know our own ignorance, our own uh, carelessness maybe um, or our own defiant abuse of the body with certain substances and so on and uh, God's desire is that we be well therefore you know he releases uh, this supernatural work um, in order to bring about healing so we call that gifts of healings and the, the reason we uh, look at uh, and we call it gifts of healings is because there are multiple ways and all kinds of sicknesses um, and uh, uh, multiple ways in which the supernatural healing is brought about right is released by god okay so we looked at um, you know three we also looked at three um, ways in which healing generally comes about one is when a person you know uh, um, a response to the word of God in faith, response to the promise of God in faith about healing, and uh, and appropriates that word, uh, that promise, and uh, through that personal faith in God, there is healing for the body. So, uh, I believe God and I receive healing, right? So that has, secondly, it also uh, because of the healing anointing the presence and the power of God released to bring about healing and the gifts of healing, um, which is supernaturally God releases that and, uh, and and that happens. And also, thirdly, we saw that it's through um, God's presence and, and God's glory, which could be a sovereign work act of God. So in all three uh, ways in which healing is uh, released, we see that uh, faith is involved. Uh, in in maybe in various degrees, uh, you know, when there is the gifts of healing released, um, well, the recipient of the uh, you know of God's healing need not always have great faith, right? So it's uh, uh, the person who is believing God for healing, the person who is ministering, and God is using to minister healing. That person has faith and and believes God for. Uh, the gifts of healing to be released and uh, and stands in faith and the recipient may not necessarily have faith but still receives healing and in the third category through the God's presence um, through the glory of God we see that you know very rarely there is uh, you know there's faith it's just the presence of God but there is ex expectation there is a seeking after God right? after God's presence and and the presence of God sovereignly does the work of healing. Right. So we see this, um, uh, and we also looked at some Old Testament examples of healing. Uh, we looked at the ministry of the Lord Jesus, um, in which uh, these uh, the healing virtue was released, and uh, and the early church, of course, walked in it. You know, Acts chapter three, Acts chapter four, Acts chapter five. We see several instances of people being healed. Uh, you know, 
Peter and John, Acts chapter 3, um, the believers gathering together and praying for you know, signs and wonders and, and healing to happen, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, um, we see that even as they are scattered because of persecution, they, um, uh, sorry, that is in Acts chapter 8, um, uh, even though people were scattered, scattered because of persecution, they uh, went about sharing the gospel and God confirmed it with signs, wonders, healings, and so on. So we see that that's something which is there in the uh, in the early church, and it's also available for us today. God has not changed; it's available for us today. So let's look at you know how does the Holy Spirit initiate the release of the gift of healing? Okay, so let me just uh, um, put up the notes. Okay. Um, so how do we how do we do that? You know, as uh, as ministers of God, how how are these gifts released? Gifts of healing, how is it released? So the first thing is, of course, to declare what we see God doing. Okay, so in our spirit, uh, you know, is God declaring something? Is God you know showing us something? Is God uh, wanting to do something? You know, what is it that he's putting in your hearts? You know, like we've been learning, and uh, um, and many of you have been like sharing what God has been putting in your heart, right? what God has been prompting. So similarly, when we get a prompting of what God wants done, right, what God wants to do, we declare that. We we declare that. So uh, uh, you know, example in the early church is Peter. Peter goes down to uh, uh, to, this, uh, to the believers who are in Lydda, and he finds this man Aeneas, who's been bedridden for eight years, paralyzed. And Peter says to him, "Jesus, the Christ, heals you." Okay, so uh, arise and make your bed. And you see that similar to what he has actually physically seen the Lord minister. You know, arise, take up your bed, and walk uh, to the man at the by the pool of Bethesda. So, uh, he in fact, he uses the same same words, and uh, and the thing is that he he has seen something. So he says, "Jesus the Christ heals you." Right. So we declare what the Lord shows us, what He wants done, or what He is about to do, and we declare that we speak that out. Right. Um, secondly, words of knowledge. Right. We looked at words of knowledge information, a piece of information about, uh, maybe about the present, it could be about the past. Um, so we, re we release that. Okay, let's say God shows that okay, somebody is there with a particular condition. Okay, um, and, and that word can come through us in many ways. It can be a prompting, it can just, you know, something rising up in our heart. Okay, and uh, this information, you know, this knowing in our heart, I know that there is someone who is going through this kind of a condition. Or it could be something that God shows us. You know, you see a picture. Uh, I remember once, uh, um, you know, uh, ministering, and then um, God actually showed, you know, uh, uh, so praying for this particular person that it was like, a, you know, as I closed my eyes, so, uh, the lung and the, which part of the lung was uh, affected, and and uh, and the and the very fact that God was showing that is because He wants to do something about it. We need to understand that it's not just um, God is you know giving that information so you can pass on that information and uh, you know uh, and leave it at that, right? Because God wants to do something based on that information. There is something that is not right, and God wants to. Do something about it. Right? So uh, we we know that he's the healer. You know, some of the common names of God. Uh, we know that he's the healer, so he wants to do something. So we release that word of knowledge, and uh, and then you know God brings about healing. The the gifts of healings are released through faith and prayer. Okay, so we lay hands and we pray. Um, sometimes uh, maybe you can anoint with oil. Or with the issue a command, um, and there is a healing that is released. Released. Okay, so we, we're going to learn a lot more in depth about healing and deliverance, um, you know, in in the course. Um, 
ministering healing and deliverance. Um, so I think this is in the next year, second year. So you'll be learning a lot more in depth uh, on healing, different ways, the basis for you know praying for healing. Why should we actually pray, uh, and so on. Okay, and uh, yeah. So getting people to act on their faith. Uh, that's also very very important. So we see in, uh, when Paul goes and preaches, and uh, so you know we read Acts chapter fourteen. This person heard Paul speaking. And Paul observed that he had faith to be healed. Okay, so Paul saw that, and he knew in his heart that this man, uh, man's faith level was, you know, he had faith. Uh, he, had, he had believed, and he had faith in his heart. So, um, so Paul says, you know, stand up straight on your feet, and he obeyed, and he leaped and walked. So, um, so while God. You know, could heal in any of these ways. We don't have to, you know, kind of introspect too much. You know, was it my faith? Was it their faith? Was it the collective faith? Of, you know, just that. As long as that person is touched by God and healed, we are. You know, we celebrate that. We are happy. Right. So, um, so that's about uh, gifts of healings. Right. So we. Uh, how do we release that in all these ways? We see what God is doing. We through words of knowledge, through laying of hands and of prayer, and uh, through the working of faith um, that you know, that we teach, and then the person receives faith, and uh, the person is healed. Right. So, uh, and many other ways. Right? So, uh, we just sensitive to what God is leading, and we and we speak, we issue commands, we we release. Like healing, right? I, I mean, in the sense, God uses us to release healing through us when we do this, right? Okay. Um, okay. Let's move on to the next one, and then probably after that, we'll take some questions and uh, doubts you might have. Working of miracles. Okay. So, so what is the difference between healing and miracle? You know, both are of course supernatural. It is a supernatural release of God's power. Uh, which uh, supernatural work of God, but when we say miracles, uh, you know, when we say healing, it, it uh, refers particularly to the body, and it's a work which brings about healing, restoration of the functioning of the body, right? the way it was designed. Right? When you say miracles, it's a wider scope. It could be, uh, you know, it could be uh, something that is uh, like, for example, if it's body, you know, if God brings about a uh, creative work you know a restore or a you know there's a let's say there is a internal organ which is missing completely and it just god just brings that about you know is god able to do it of course right uh, maybe there's a you know uh, maybe there's a kidney that is missing and you know, there's only one kidney and then and there is a release of the working of miracles, and because of which the the other kidney is formed. Now that's a miracle. That's not healing. That's a miracle, right? It's a creative miracle where an internal organ which was missing, which was not there, is now there because of God's intervention. Right? So it can be even supply of uh, you know, like the supply of oil um, to the widow. And it can be a financial supply. It can be, uh, you know, so all these things which go against natural laws, override natural laws, um, and uh, completely turn the you know, situation around. Now, that's a miracle. Okay, we say that's a, that's a miracle. It's, uh, you know, it could be even favor, supernatural favor, um, in, which brings about a miracle in, let's say, a work situation. Right, and uh, what what was totally unexpected is uh, you know there's a turnaround, and that's a that's a miracle, right? So we see uh, in the Old Testament do we see miracles? Plenty of them. Right? We see uh, in the lives of Moses, in the life of Joshua, in the lives of all these uh, men of God. We see that there were many miracles, like Moses, for example, uh, in Egypt, the miracles that happened there, parting of the Red Sea. Turning bitter water sweet. These are miracles, right? Uh, just to give us an example of what miracles are, and you know, the scope of miracles. Um, 
uh, bread and meat, which means supernatural supply uh, for Elijah. Right? And the ravens came and fed Elijah. Now that's a miracle because you know that uh, when you look at ravens or crows, they their their food is bread and you know meat, but they come and they feed. Okay, it's a supernatural work. It's a miracle. Multiplication of flour and oil, again a miracle. Uh, widow's son raised from the dead, that's a miracle. Uh, rain, which means even the natural, you know, the weather being affected. Um, rain after three years of drought, again a miracle. And Elijah runs faster than horses, which is again a miracle. So we see all these are miracles which we listed in the Old Testament. Uh, and you know, axe head is floating again, a miracle. Right? And in the life of Jesus, in the New Testament, the ministry of Jesus, we see similar works which are done by the Holy Spirit, turning water into wine, uh, multiplying, walking through a, a crowd and with no bodily harm. We see that you know, they are about to throw him off the cliff and then, but he walked through them. Scripture says he walked through them and it's went about. So it's again a miracle, the, the supernatural or the miraculous catch of fish. Right? That's again a miracle. Because he says, Peter says, uh, we have, you know, Luke chapter 5, I think he says, uh, we have fished all night and we have not uh, caught anything. And and he's the expert, right? He's the fisherman. But the law of Jesus says, you know, drop your nets for a catch on the other side. And there is this miraculous catch of fish. So uh, we see all this in the New Testament. So uh, um, it, it's, it's the same Holy Spirit, same God who does this. And Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 4 um, has, uh, has this. Let me just read that. Um, it says, God also bearing witness. Okay, how? With signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Okay. The verse before that talks about, you know, how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which was first spoken by the Lord and confirmed to us by those who heard him, God bearing witness. Right. So it's talking about our day and time. It's talking about the New Testament church. And um, God is bearing witness, is testifying with signs, wonders, and miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So, when it comes to miracles, how do we, how do we again pray, minister, receive in our own lives? Right? Um, once again, you know, it, we go back to what we sense in our spirit, what the Lord is doing. Okay, so this again, a sense. Uh, um, uh, or being sensitive to the moving of the Spirit of God, being sensitive to the fact that God wants to do something at that moment, that he wants to do something which is uh, miraculous, something that's supernatural. Right? Um, it can be through words of knowledge, like we saw earlier. It can be the God you know, placing something in our heart, saying that he wants to do that. Uh, it's uh, also... Uh, it can be something that is released that uh, through God's presence, anointing. Maybe it's a time of worship. It's a time of prayer, and uh, you know there's a presence of God which is so powerful, far powerfully experienced, and and uh, so maybe it's a church meeting, church service, and the presence of God is so strong, and uh, you know worship is just continuing, and and. You've been sensitive into your heart, in your heart. You, 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 know, you, God wants to do something uh, miraculous. And I just want to testify that um, uh, it, this was one of our, you know, in one of our church camps. Uh, I think this was, I think this was uh, the last but one church camp that we had, and uh, we had a. Uh, it was the last session, last um, day, and uh, we were. Uh, supposed to have the worship time and then I think two sessions and then close uh, close with lunch. Right? So that was it. So started with worship and worship went on till lunchtime, you know, which means that it was about maybe three hours or three and a half hours just had worship. And um, 
and so um, so everything and all the sessions were kind of cancelled and we just had worship just worship went on because people wouldn't stop right we didn't feel like stopping so it went on for about three three and a half hours and during that time there was this um, uh, there was this little baby uh, which had a kind of a growth uh, internet near the throat area and inside you know you look and there was a growth and the parents were planning to uh, actually take the baby and have uh, a surgery done you know it was a uh, it was a growth which was there have a surgery done and i think the surgery was scheduled for that week i'm not very sure but as uh, you know this time of uh, praise and worship went on and and uh, they they checked i don't know if they checked over there or if they went home and checked and they they realized that uh, and and the mother obviously was praying and you know uh, praying to the lord and asking for uh, supernatural work to be done you know, all throughout and uh, they realized that the growth had disappeared right so it, it was a it was a miracle uh, uh, growth which was there uh, was not there at the end of that uh, worship time right so the presence of god and the anointing of god uh, you know released during the time of worship um, brought about that miracle so also you know when we respond in faith when we come with expectation right? knowing who god is and desiring that god will do what he promised he will do um, and the response god responds to our faith and uh, he does who he, he reveals who he is and in his character in his nature he's a supernatural god he's a miracle working god so we see that um, that also being uh, released right so personally we you know similar to the other gifts of the spirit uh, we release uh, we declare what god is doing and encourage people to act on it you know like uh, maybe something needs to be done in order to you know in order to uh, you know uh, in order to kind of display that faith you know, uh, maybe you need to step out and do something right so uh, we can encourage people to do something uh, do that you know, what god has put in our hearts right? maybe they need to uh, check go and check some some of these things may not be possible right then and there but um, maybe they need to go back home and check and test and and see you know but, but uh, we can encourage people to do that and act in faith right and say okay this is what god is doing right now this is what god is revealing right now but um, why don't you extend your faith or why don't you act in faith and see what god is doing right um, again words of knowledge uh, you see and you you declare or you sense uh, and you declare that uh, word of knowledge faith and prayer and uh, and also getting people to act uh, through the faith okay now in all these ways we we see that um, we see and we experience the the miraculous right, happening okay uh, maybe we we'll just look at this also and then we'll um, you know gift of faith which is also in similar lines right healings uh, gifts of healings uh, gifts of miracles working of miracles and gift of faith now this is a supernatural impartation of faith okay uh, it's a supernatural impartation of faith to believe god for a miracle to believe god for a particular thing or the mountain to move um, you know it's a supernatural impartation of faith okay now it uh, it works very closely with gifts of healings or working of miracles and so on and it's uh, it's different from uh, a faith that is nurtured you know we can we can build our faith right how do we build our faith we we stay in the word we meditate on the word we read the word we confess the word uh, we grow in faith right we we pray in the spirit uh, the bible talks about build yourself on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit we see that in jude so um so we we do all this and we can we continue to grow uh, in faith so this is different this gift of faith is different because it's it's given it's supernaturally imparted by god 
and for a particular instance in that instance do we have the surge of faith which was not there and maybe you yourself are surprised that you are believing god for something so you know so radical right so it's um, it's for a specific time it's for that specific situation to change and you stand in that faith you know it's a it's a supernaturally imparted faith um it's also it's also not presumption you know we need to make that clear that it's not like okay i i assume that god would do it or i presume that god or would do it you know it's it's a, it's a knowing knowing know that you know that you know that god is doing it's not assumption it's not presumption uh but it's a uh, you know impartation of faith and uh, you will know it when you receive it right and it's for us to step out and do uh, uh and do the extraordinary right uh, a gift of faith we see some old old testament examples we see uh moses and the miracles in egypt and through the wilderness um every time you know he receives an instruction from god he says moses you know you you lift that rod um and then you know you to tap uh you touch the or you speak to the rock and and, and he, every time he does that we see that um uh something amazing happens something miraculous happens and and we can just conclude that every time god said that um his heart must have been filled with faith right moses because um you see the egyptians are coming the pharaohs coming and uh, you know there is the sea in front and god gives this instruction and it was it must have taken you know faith to to obey because it was it was the entire you know the, not only his life but everyone's life is in danger but uh he moved in faith right uh, and the sun standing still uh where uh, joshua uh, speaks to the lord and then the sun stands still the moon stopped and you know it's it's mentioned there so we see uh, these old testament examples um new testament also of course uh, there's several gifts uh, several you know people being healed and um Uh, and we see in the life of both in the life of Jesus and also in the early church right so it's a supernatural impartation or a, uh, you know like it's like faith just being infused in our hearts for a time and for a particular purpose um and this gift of faith uh, works uh, along with the other other gifts It could be through word of knowledge word of wisdom prophecy and uh, and and the, and the faith comes into our hearts and it releases gifts of healings it releases a working of miracles right so how do i release it so i act on it right i receive it i receive this supernatural surge of faith and i need to act on it whether it it could be to speak something it could be to stretch out my hand and do something it um i'm you know it may it might mean to declare something sing something out declare it but when we do that when we act uh, in obedience in boldness to what god has put in our hearts then that causes the release of that that that, that faith and causes the the work of god to be done right to take place that supernatural work takes place so so that is a gift of faith that we see so it's a, it's a gift it's it's there it's it's different from faith that we that we um, faith that is nurtured and uh, faith that is developed and built up right because the lord jesus talks and i'm sure you you've learned this in in the in the class about faith that you know talk faith uh, the lord jesus talks about people the disciples who had uh, you know under developed faith he kind of rebukes them for it which means that faith can be developed you know, faith grows but here it's a supernatural impartation okay 
so we see uh, these three we saw these three gifts we'll we'll stop here and um, yeah so any any questions here any questions uh, about the you know gifts of healings working of miracles uh, gift of faith um pastor what about the person at the receiving and uh, does not have faith um we can still expect healing correct yeah yeah so so yes so when it comes to these you know specifically these when it comes to uh, gifts of healings working of miracles and gift of faith you know um, well uh, it's always good to teach the person and build faith in the heart of the person um, so that they can also you know expect the same thing and uh, and desire the same thing um, but uh, you know when it comes to the anointing healing anointing and uh, you know these gifts we see that it's not really dependent on the you know faith of the person uh, in most cases right it's not dependent where it's just uh, uh, you know it's a supernatural work which is sovereignly a sovereign work of god released yeah yeah thank you sir right yeah did you you have a question yes pastor it's uh, regarding the gift of healing yeah. uh, so uh, is it like uh, when we operate in this gift yeah uh, it can be released through different uh, impressions uh, but i'm specifically asking of uh, your mm-hmm. personal experience or anyone you have heard about like do they really um, you know sense in their spirit um, in a manner that they can they are so sure about the healing that will take place or just like an event in their mind will will they mm. be able to see it yeah yeah thank you um will they be able to um yes I, i missed that part what did you will say they be the last part? yeah will they be able to see it in their mind or you know how they how they understand like this person is going to get it yeah Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, this this is just one one thing which happened. It was, I think, it's a. I don't know whether to classify it as healing or miracle. Um, you know, uh, like, like um, you know, we we have these prayer walks happening. Um, this is pre-COVID times. We used to have it in the mornings. Uh, so, I was just getting ready. My wife and I we were getting ready to go. for this prayer walk uh south bangalore so and uh, she uh, had a you know like a major pain in the here you know the neck area and the and she couldn't really move her neck so um so she was uh, she was saying you know I, you just carry on i don't think i can i think she had slept in a wrong position something you know i don't know what or what is the cause so she was uh, you know she was experiencing that and major discomfort so she said like i just can't i just can't move so we said okay let can, can we just, okay i was getting ready i said okay let me i'll go at least then just before going i said okay let's pray and we were praying and while praying i just saw that um, uh you know i closed my eyes and prayed of course i didn't have my eyes open I, and i saw something like a stick okay going through her neck okay so uh so it's not in the natural but you know i'm just close my eyes and i saw that so something you know like a like a stick uh, going through an egg here so then i i was kind of surprised i didn't know what to do then i you know i just felt uh, that i had to remove it you know there's something which is there which shouldn't be there so so i still had my eyes closed and i just say i you know i just said okay i'm just removing it and i just did that right and um, and then yeah that was it i just removed that and then she uh, uh after we just prayed and i just asked her would you feel better yeah i think i feel better and uh, and she had, she went she had a bath got ready everything and even she, she was so it was absolutely you know a, a marked difference so she fine um, and then we went so i didn't tell her about this what i saw so i think for a couple of days or maybe a, a day and after that i said you know i saw this and i just did that and then 
and it was uh, you know a marked difference so you could move so that was something which um, you know for me personally you know uh, yeah so i don't know how to classify it you know put mm-hmm. it under gift of faith or, or you know working with but it was something that i just went ahead and and uh, you know in obedience i think to what i was sensing in my heart i saw there is a sense that okay it shouldn't be there i did that and then you know there's this physical manifestation of you know complete uh, relief in our body uh, and in that area the pain just you know, disappeared so that's something that i can you know testify personally um but i think your question was slightly different or there you wanted to know whether there is a assurance in our heart Uh, yeah uh, i was i was uh, yeah this this is a perfect example pastor mm. what you mentioned yeah i was actually looking for such a kind of experience like you we would be able to uh, for example a blind person getting eyesight back mm. so would we really sense it in a manner that we can see that that's happening in our spirit mm. yeah that's yeah really- yeah sometimes it's so sure you know we are so so sure like um, like that service where um, i'm sorry i'm just giving personal examples because that's i think that's the best thing um because of what i know so uh, that service that person with the lung you know thing so so i just uh, so we just prayed okay god you know showing this and then we asked okay is is there do you have a problem with it and then she said yeah in fact they were going in for some treatment next day and then we knew you know, you know that god is going to do something that and then you feel so strong in your heart but there have been times when you don't feel it right but then god has done it um so that's also you know that's also the case where you don't sense it in your uh, like uh, there was one time when just praying over a person and you're just agreeing and praying uh so this person had a problem with the back you know, major problem uh, with the back and he was saying you know i don't know every time you know, pastor it's let's just pray and so he was praying and and then uh, so after prayer he was he was completely fine so he said he, he heard something like a you know like a cracking noise in the back and he was fine but for me i wasn't really expecting anything you know i was just i was actually tired and i was just playing i said to god you know but he i think he it was it was you know like it was his faith he, he was so strong in faith and he was expecting god to do something and uh, and then you know there is that working of i don't know whether you can call it miracle or healing and um, there was a cracking uh, crackling noise at the back and then he is completely healed so yeah so those are some you know uh, personal examples uh yeah so the thing is to really step out and you know do it uh, take that risk and do it yeah well um, the question again is you know what if nothing happens uh, you know do we stop doing it right so well just continue you know we're learning we're growing in faith uh, we're growing in this so the thing is not to stop you know i was personally really um uh, encouraged by the testimony of Todd White uh Todd White evangelist you know um and God uses him you know on the streets and uh, he does a lot so he says you know the uh, it was it took about 100 times like he he says 100 times that he prayed for people you know and uh, and then the i think it was 100 time or time after that that God actually opened the, the a blind eye Right. in the sense he saw his first you know this kind of a miracle but it was 100 times so i was you know uh, greatly encouraged by that and i was wondering you know what if he stopped in the 1998th time or the 99th time you know stop saying hey this doesn't work right uh, i don't believe in god's word or i don't believe in the miraculous or maybe it's not god's will and if he stopped you know what what would have happened but he pursued You know, this is what god's word says and this is we see as an example and for whatever reason i cannot figure out that why it's not happened to that extent but i know that god has spoken god has said so let me be obedient and do it uh so when we have that faith mindset uh that's that's a good thing right so we we see uh, you know 
uh, thought by testifying about that and god uses him consistently in in healing and, and signs and evangelism right okay. okay we'll stop here we'll come back um and then you can have uh, we can discuss some more right we'll take a break and come back thank you <laughs>